Hi, my name is Jody Wieriski. I am an ITAN card holder. I'm a platinum consultant. And um, I'm here today to answer any questions about how to be successful in your business. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Don't be shy, but it's gonna be questions more along the lines of um, how I've become successful with mine. I mean, I started here over three years ago, um, two months prior to COVID shutting the world down. And I built up my business to one where right now I don't need to market myself. In fact, I can't market myself because I will, I have too many clients as is, which is a very good problem to have. Um, so I'm going to an answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, do I have a marketing plan and a marketing strategy that you laid out? No, I'm not a formal person, Rebecca, like that. Um, I sort of wing it. And as I go, I, I change things to it as well. Um, but what I do as far as, I mean, I do the marketing that we talk about, like mock bookings. I also have mail or light where I do um, email marketing to my clients. I don't do it that often, maybe once every three months, but I also use mail or light for the team building aspect too, and put people, any prospects in there. And then um, once a month, I email past, past prospects about um, either joining us or um, getting on a call with us, but I use uh, mail or light. So that's when I first started, the first thing I did was I emailed um, myself and BCC'd everyone else in my address book and I let them know I was a travel agent, but no, I'm not a formal marketing person. I just sort of see what works. What are your top three daily must do's to keep your business thriving? I love that, Lori. So I write a list, first of all, at the end of every day for the next day. I will not shut my computer without writing my list for the next day. Um, on it is a new LinkedIn ad. So every day I do a new LinkedIn ad for building. I have on the top of my um, list, I have one, two, three. And what that means is post something in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. Um, so right now I don't post mock bookings, but when I first started, I did. So I have like a little list there. Um, I did mock bookings three times a day. And I would write that down to make sure that I did that every single day. Uh, what, let me see, let me see a third thing that I do. Uh, my, any trainings, that's the third thing. I will get on training still to this day. I've been in here for over three years. People might think you don't have to get on trainings. I still get on trainings all the time. So I would say um, schedule my day. So that's the main thing of any calls, trainings, um, my posts and my building ad. I, I think those would be the top three, but I do keep, like I said, a list I know about, um, I'm gonna show you something. Uh, no judgment, no judgment. Um, so this is like my list every day. I also have this too, of everything I need to do. Red means I have to do it right away. Blue, I don't have to. So every day at the end of the day, I will move over whatever I need to to the next day. So I've got a color-coded calendar. So uh, did you initially book with friends and family since you said you booked 45,000 worth of travel in the first month? Um, yes, I did. I started mock bookings, Regina, a week after I started here. And I did them, I shared them or um, did one every day for the first year, all of 2020. Uh, my first bookings, the first one was a Facebook friend, somebody I went to high school with over 30 years ago. I wouldn't know if I saw it on the street. Um, and I booked for her. I had a few referrals and I had, I would say, Facebook friends. My first mock booking client was 30 days after I started and I still have her as a client. I've already booked two trips for her. And when she gets back from her next trip, we're gonna work on a Hawaii bucket list trip. So I did not book with friends and family. I booked, like I said, with Facebook friends, but I don't consider them my close friends. Um, I actually didn't really start booking with friends and family until probably over a year or so after I started here. They started coming to me. I don't um, promote myself to my friends and family. Alexis, no, I did not do mock bookings every day. I mean, different mock bookings every day. I would do a different mock booking usually two to three times a week. Um, but what I did is every time I would go and post, I would um, search the mock booking, see if it went up in price. If it did, then I would go and do a new mock booking. Um, if it did not go up in price, I would 
keep it going for a couple of days. If I found it did really well, I would keep it going even longer. Um, I would always check my insights. If I saw my insights that it did not go anywhere, I would actually change it out even sooner. So I really uh, focus on the insights, but I never did a, a new mock booking every day. Have you had clients who don't respond to you after filling out a quote form and then reach you reach out via email text to inquire more specifics and they don't respond? Uh, yes. And Dan, you're correct. This is where charging for a quote comes in because you're getting rid of those people who are just price shopping, um, who aren't really serious about booking. I just had one who wanted to um, me to give a quote. And when I said my fee, they said, oh, I was just sort of getting an idea. I don't even know if I want to go away. So that's great. I didn't have to work with them. So, but yes, we've all had those clients, Dan. So um, the main thing you really want to do is you want to get them on that phone and, and have a personal connection. So like I have them fill out a form first. And then after they fill out the form, I have a phone call with them. If they won't do a phone call with me, then I will not work with them. And I've only lost one client because they would not have a phone call with me. And it wasn't so much that uh, they wouldn't speak to me. They just didn't have the time. So they ended up booking um, either on their own or with someone else. And I responded to them and explained why I needed to speak to them. I said, I am behind a computer. You don't know me. I want to sort of get to know you. Um, and so I want that personal relationship. And they understood and they said they'd be back. So we'll see. But yeah, charging for a, it's not so much charging a quote, but charging a fee. Um, even if you're nervous to do it, which I was super nervous to charge a fee, um, charge $25. It really does make a difference. Uh, Sophia, yes, I do copy and paste my LinkedIn ads every day. Um, I know that, you know, it says someday it flags me when you try to do that. Some people say that they are flagged as well. I've gotten flagged a couple times here and there. And when I do get flagged, I actually stop posting for a couple days and then I go back to posting. But I do. I'm a copy and paste or re, not even copy and paste, just a repost. I just repost it. Yep. Uh, Branch up for LinkedIn is great. We use branch up for LinkedIn as well as branch up for um, for Facebook. Okay. As far as mail or light, do you promote travel to your old prospects or is it just a follow up about the opportunity? No, I, I promote. No, um, actually, that's a good question. So I do a little of both. So I will sometimes, it depends. Um, like I do the paid version now for mail or light. So I will sometimes promote travel if I'm doing that travel, you know, three to four times a year that I'm going to send to my clients, I might add on some um, prospects as well. I always add on, I have in my mailer light, it's a tab saying prospects not interested, I will send it to them. But um, I also will just do a follow up about the opportunity. So I do a little both. So the insights, um, Regina on Facebook. So, so you can, when you post something, now I didn't share this one, but you can click see insights and it was seen by 134. Um, let me get you down to one of my mock bookings. And like I said, I don't do them that often anymore. When you uh, are working with a client and you do a quote, make it into a mock booking. You've already done the work. So like this one, I made into a mock booking um, because I already did the work on it. I shared it eight times and it reached that many people, 48, 4,900. My highest I think I've had has been about 31,000 people it has reached. So the, and the thing with mock bookings, which I want you guys to understand, it's not so much that you want to sell that mock booking you want people to start following your page and be interested. So as far as how many mock bookings I've actually sold, not that many, but I, I have. I've had, like I have somebody go, uh, no, they just went away in December due to that mock booking. So you want people to get interested in you to start following your page. They need to trust you. So for them to trust you, you need to have followers to your page. They're not, if they see that, you know, Ashley has 10 followers and I have 3,000, who are they going to book with? They're going to book with me who has 3000 followers and so many reviews on Google. Okay. 
um, if they book with you, do you take that 25 off their total? No, I do a non-refundable um, professional services fee for for my uh, book or for my fee. I don't I don't give it back to them. If you are going to ever do that, where you are going to give it back to them, say that you will pay that $25 for their final payment. Make sure it's their final payment. And Mailer Light was free with so many users or so many subscribers, um, but I've hit over that. I forget how many thousands of subscribers I have. So um, I do pay, I pay like $15 a month. But before that, before I had that many, I did not pay. Do I have recommendations on solid ways to build social networks after coming from a very different industry, especially on places like LinkedIn and Facebook? Um, Ash, can you unmute? I can. Hey. Okay. So what do you mean, like, as far as to build social networks? Because, um, like, how I built this business, because I did not have the travel background, is I literally just kept doing mock bookings. And that's how I got most of my followers or my clients. Um, but what do you mean different way, uh, solid ways to build social networks? So I know what I'm running into, like I've had my LinkedIn for over a decade, but mm -hmm. I came into it from education. So yes. all of my connections, like they're not people that are even interacting with any of my travel posts, mock bookings, personal posts on LinkedIn. And I know that I'm running into issues and in trying to utilize LinkedIn for the team building aspect, but like, I just have no traction. And when I go back and I look through some of the insights and info that's there, what I'm seeing is part of it's like, I'm speaking to my circle and this is not anything my circle's already interested in. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting when I first started with LinkedIn for travel, cause I did not have it for travel before. I literally would accept any invitation. And I also went through and, you know, tried to connect with pretty much anyone and everyone um, just to build up my network. And I did build it up that way. And then I started seeing more um, for my insights of people for my personal page, checking any travel posts, any, I do a lot of like those, uh, the emails we get, I'll do a lot of the, uh, um, articles. I'll post those articles and I seem to get traction with that, but I don't have an answer for you. Okay. No, no, that's super fine. I was, I, this is one of those, yeah. like, I'm going to try to pick your brain and see if there yeah. is something that I haven't landed on yet. And the answer is totally fine that it's no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, guys, I, I build up most of mine through Facebook, through mock bookings. It really, really does work, but you have to be consistent with them. Um, on LinkedIn, I will do, I started my business page. So I have my JZW travel page and I'll post on there. And then also whenever um, for the team building, you get people who like your business page as well. So I build it up with that. So, but I don't have a, I'm not a good marketer. I don't know. I mean, I just do what I do. I don't know all the little different techniques. I love to, I love more info on your color coded calendar. All right. I love, I love my color code. I just added a purple yesterday. All right, let's see. So when you're here, you have your calendars. You can add other calendars right here and you can add a calendar and uh, create new calendar, the name. And then when you create it, you can choose a, a color for it as well. So, and then you can click the ones you want actually on here. So I just added my purple yesterday. So just under other calendars. So Heidi, uh, do I pay to boost my mock bookings? When I first started, yes, I would pay about $5 for four days once in a while. I made sure that it was a good price point mock booking if I was going to do that. Um, I am not allowed to boost anymore on Facebook because I wrote the word champagne in a mock booking and Facebook flagged me for that. You can't do that. So I'm no longer allowed to boost, but I suggest like $5 for four days. Don't go crazy, but just here and there do that. And I would do it usually from about 60 miles from the airport that they would fly out of. 
Um, I feel like I put too much time thought into mock bookings. Do you have tips on the type of mock bookings, like price wise? Yeah, I would try and, um, you know, it, it, it's changed through the years, but I would probably try and say for $4,000 and less for a couple. Um, I don't like doing mock bookings for families as much because it sounds like it's a lot of money when you put it all together. Um, so I try to stay clear of that. I like to do the couples, adults only. And I like to do, if you can do 1500 to 2000 per person, if it's a higher number, um, I wouldn't put the total of the, the mock booking, the total of the cost of the trip, I would put uh, per person based on double occupancy. So if I think it's too high, I put it per person based on double occupancy. Uh, what other social media do you use to promote yourself besides Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or even Google? So um, I promote on Facebook. I don't get much on Instagram, but I do promote on Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, I don't promote myself on Google, but I will give all my clients when they get back from their trip. I will show you. Uh, let me pull it up first before I show you. I send a traveler feedback form. And on there is my, oh, I'm in the wrong. On there are my links for them to, um, to give me a recommendation. Now, when I first started, I actually, as soon as I worked with somebody, whether they booked with me or not, like I, I worked with people. Now, remember during COVID, I worked with people and then they decided not to book. So it was really hard back then. Um, but I would ask them once I worked with them or once I booked a trip, hey, would you mind giving me a review? Because I wanted to build up the reviews in the beginning. Now I don't do that. I only ask for a review when they come back from their trip. So I have my traveler feedback form. And on here, it says, why are you bringing that up? Okay. On here, it says my, um, they can go right to this and click on it and go right to the review. I think there's an issue with my Facebook review. I, I It pulls up, but I don't know why people can't do it. But Google and then Travel Leaders Network. So make sure that you go into Agent Universe and go to Agent Profiler and build up your um, profile. Once it says 100% unpublished or 80% on, I think it says 100% unpublished, you have to reach out to Archer to publish it for you. I have gotten people through Travel Leaders Network. Um, I get a lot through Google. A lot of people uh, check my Google and, uh, you know, the more I've gotten, I just actually had somebody who said to me, um, he said, have you read your reviews? He's like, you should read your reviews. He goes, they're awesome. He goes, people really like you. He goes, that's the reason why I went to you. So I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but I also use TikTok. So if um, I'm not good at TikTok, though, I did get my very first client on TikTok and I booked for her. I would, she made me so happy. Um, but I do TikTok as well. <laughs> All right. Um, how do you connect with people on LinkedIn? I feel as I'm so lost. You can get banned from. Oh, so, yeah, I, I got banned because I put you can't write about alcohol on Facebook. You're not supposed to write the words. Um, how do you connect with people on LinkedIn? Give me a second. I have not done this in a while. So let me just see if I can. I'm trying to see, okay. So. If you go up to my network, you can actually go down um, and it'll give people here and you can connect with them. So sometimes I'll see a name and I'm like, oh, I, I know them. So you can sort of connect that way. Um, you can look by, you know, you can search by certain things or certain, um, if you want, uh, you know, what their field is. But a lot of them, people I may know, it says from Ithaca College, sometimes it comes up people you might know from around you, and then I go and connect. And you just hit connect. Facebook gave a $30 free ad credit. All right, cool. 
Uh, do you do a different type of post on your Instagram? I understand so far that most mock bookings are on Facebook and LinkedIn, but do you do different? No, I do the exact same thing on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, sometimes Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, I haven't done that much, but no, I just do the same. I actually try, um, I'm not good at Instagram. I don't want to take too much time. Honestly, if I were going to get somebody to help me, it would be to help me with social media because I find it very time consuming. Um, I also do, I, um, I also have a blog. So on WordPress. So like I was just in Jamaica and I wrote a blog um, and I will put that on Twitter and LinkedIn, and Facebook. Uh, no, I don't have any insights for marketing on Twitter, except hashtags. I know I am not the person to ask about that. I'm sorry. Uh, can you be successful without a Google page? Mine got flagged and suspended 24 hours. I need a business registration form. Um, yeah, I did not have my Google for a long time because of COVID. They weren't accepting thing. So I, I started this without a Google page. So, yep, you can be successful without it. Uh, I can, Regina, I connect for my personal account on LinkedIn, but what I also do is in LinkedIn, uh, da, 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 da. when you're in LinkedIn, is this where I do it? Yeah, you can go to admin tools and invite connections and you can invite so many people. Um, what the heck? My sister's not following me. Invite. Um, you can uh, invite people. You have 250 credits. Some, I don't know if everybody has 250 credits or not, but you just basically go to admin tools in your business page and you invite connections to like your business page. But then I connect with people from my personal page. Oh, Tori, that's a good question. Do you ever get in funks with bookings and what do you do to get out of them? Uh, Tori, can you unmute? Yeah, don't mind the background noise. <laughs> okay. So are you saying funks like with frustrated with actual bookings or frustrated because you don't have bookings or both? Uh, let's go with both. Okay. Uh, yes. I like right now I'm finding Europe bookings very challenging. Um, in fact, I just closed this morning a $13,500 booking that exhausted me, absolutely exhausted me over the past few weeks. Um, but then I have to remember that I'm helping these people and I, I love when they send me these photos and they travel or they refer me. Um, so yes, I do. Um, but as I always say, you have to remember your why. So for me, I don't care what job I'm in, I'm going to have good and bad days. So there are times I will shut the computer and just say, you know what, I'm taking a, a break and I will walk away from it and, you know, come back refreshed the next day. Um, as far as not having bookings, oh yeah, last summer I was really, um, I, I was really slow, like extremely slow for me. And then I became really busy. And my husband's like, remember when you were slow? He's like, you do have to know this is a roller coaster of a ride. You're very cyclical based on time of year and things like that. So yes, um, I definitely do. I definitely think there are harder days than others. Um, there are also some bookings I don't wanna handle, uh, but I do. But sometimes I actually just turn somebody down the other day because you have to think about your return on investment. Is it going to be worth your time to work on something that might not either give you much money or might not give you much joy? So I hope that helps. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, what other marketing techniques do you use other than social media? Uh, so I don't do expos. And the only reason I don't do expos is because I don't think I can handle the volume right now. Um, but would I have done it back in 2020 if they had them? Yes, 100%. I think that if you're going to do an expo, you need to find out how many other travel agents will be there. If they're going to have a bunch. In fact, I was talking with a magazine about um, being uh, promoted in their magazine. The pricing was great. And then I was like, wait a minute, how many travel agents do you have in your magazine? 
and there were, I think, 15. And I was like, yeah, no, mm -mm, no. Um, if you do an expo and you're one of three travel agents, great. If you're one of 20, no, I, I would not do it. So you have to think about the money. Um, you also have to think that sometimes like an expo might be 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. If it's 500 bucks and you get one client from that, you have just paid for itself. Um, I'm, I am in a networking group. I don't pay for it. It's just um, a, you get together, you have to pay for your own lunch. I'm in it twice a month. It's a smaller group of about 20 some people. Um, it's perfect for me. I actually just booked for somebody in there the other day. It's what I need. Um, if I needed clients, I would join BNI for networking 100%. BNI, it, you have to go weekly. They only let one per um, industry in. So there'd only be, you'd be the only travel agent. Um, you have to pay for your food weekly and it's very expensive the first year. It gets cheaper the second. So av on average, it's about 700 bucks the first year. And then the second year and on is about 500. But what BNI does is you have to give referrals. So you're gonna get electricians and you're gonna get realtors and you're gonna get mortgage people and you're gonna get all that. Um, so you have to give referrals, but they also have to give referrals back. So I think BNI is a great networking um, group. So as far as me, the only thing I do is this one networking group. I big thing where I can get people, I put my um, cards out at the nail salon. Every all these women like to, you know, when they're going up to pay, they see my cards right there. Um, it's on a pizza place like a bulletin board. It's on the dry cleaners bulletin board. It's a great to hand out your cards in your uh, check like the billfold for your check when you hand it in um, when you're having dinner. Uh, because a lot of times I've had so many people say, oh my gosh, you're a travel agent. Uh, So-and-so is getting married and they need this or they need that. So that's another great way too. So as everybody always says, don't be a secret agent. Do I check all my sites every day? Social media, LinkedIn, form? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I see you post thank you posts. Do you do that for all clients. Um, yeah, so what, Alicia, I do. Once I book, I do. But what I started doing is putting them together because I have a lot of clients now for Europe and I don't want to focus just on Europe. I don't want people to just, like my my uh, Instagram and my Facebook are basically all-inclusive in islands because that's what I like to book. So that's what I market for. So what I'll do is a thankful Thursday post. And I try and do... Um, that Thursday, how many different places I've I've uh, booked for, and I can show you one of those. You know, you've probably seen it, but I'll show other people. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Did you say you wait till they travel, or do you when you, they book with you? When they book with me. Okay. I lost my little box for you guys. Okay, so I just said this week we booked a girl's trip to Punta Cana, anniversary trip, a spring break getaway and a couple's trip on Alaska. So I thank them once they book with me. If they send me photos, like on my traveler feedback form, if they send me photos and they say that um, I can use them, then I will do that once they return. I'll wait and see if they do a review for me first, but then if not, I do that. But no, I thank them either as soon as they book or I do them all as one, but I always thank people once they book. And I never tag them because I don't want, um, people don't always want to be tagged. People don't want other people to know that they booked a trip. That's for them to say. So I will never tag people in my post unless I know the person I will actually say, is it okay if I tag you? But otherwise I don't. I just put their first names. So let's see how much that insight is. Okay. All right. Uh, no, I don't advertise in any local neighborhood magazines. Um, actually, in my networking group, there is a guy who does to his magazine. I go, I've never gotten your magazine in the mail. He goes, it goes to homes of 700,000 or more. I'm like, okay, that's why. Um, I probably would network in there because I like the luxury, but um, no, I have not. My mentor, I believe did it in one of the local magazines. And I, I don't think her return on investment was the greatest, but I also think it was during like when COVID was sort of shutting the world down. 
So definitely check into that. A lot of the magazines, you have to do it for three months or longer. So see what the costs would be and whether it's worth it. Sophia, I don't pay for LinkedIn. Uh, Jenny, what do you post differently between your personal and professional LinkedIn page? So on my professional LinkedIn page, on my JCW, I will post all my mock bookings. I will po post some articles. I will post thank yous to clients. Um, and I use branch up. On my personal LinkedIn page, I do not market. I do not um, do mock bookings because I'm old school. LinkedIn is supposed to be more of a networking. So what I will do is I will post about articles. I will thank clients like who have booked with me. Um, like today, I just went and had a lunch with um, some vendors. I will probably thank them in, in my personal rather than my professional, but my professional, my business one has mostly my mock bookings and some other things. My um, personal has more articles. Um, I never, when I, when I post my LinkedIn ads um, for builders, I never put it on my personal page because I don't want people to see that that's what I'm doing is just looking for new agents because I am a travel agent. I don't want them thinking that, oh, that's all she's doing. So I never put my building ads on my personal. Where do you think is the easiest to book Europe? Um, so, okay, that's more booking Q&A, um, but I use Europe Express a lot. It depends. And then sometimes I use facts. I'd le like to reach out to larger groups such as people traveling for work conventions. So if you're looking for people traveling for work conventions, have you gone and like done a flyer or something and handed out at corporate companies, like gone and given your information to corporations. So I would, I mean, I, I'm not the person to tell you that, Teresa, because I haven't done it myself, but I would think that I would introduce myself and do either a mail or something like that for corporations. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just one quick question. So you would do the direct approach rather than I've been doing like emails and I've been reaching out via phone. Um, no, I think that's good too. The other thing with this is that's a perfect thing to do on your personal LinkedIn. Okay. It, like, do you know anyone, blah, blah, blah. That's a personal, that's a personal LinkedIn thing. I think you could do as well. Got it. Okay. No, I think phone calls and emails are good too. I mean, I, you know, you can, because a lot of times they will throw mail th type things away. Um, but yeah, that's a good thing. Another uh, place to market, which I have not done, but people have done it is on Nextdoor, the Nextdoor app for your local uh, town to put on, stuff on Nextdoor. And then my husband also said, um, oh, for team building, Eventbrite. He's seen people put uh, for team building on Eventbrite. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. And and also, Teresa, that's another reason to join like a networking company or networking group or your chamber of commerce if you, if that's what you want to focus on. The chamber of commerce would be good for that. Uh, do you post about when you get certified on personal or business page? Uh, you know what? I didn't really put it on my. I put some on my business page. Um, I put some on my personal. I sort of play bear and some I don't post. I will always post it on my LinkedIn personal page. Um, on my personal Facebook page, I will sometimes do it when it's a fun certification. Um, on my business, in the very beginning, I posted certifications. I don't post certifications that often anymore. Uh, I have not gotten a bad review on Google, so I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know that you can. I thought it stays, but I don't have an answer for you. Does it stay, Rebecca? It does. We had a bad review at the at um, a company that I worked at. It was an ex employee, and people just started to do the good ones to right to offset. Just, yeah, to offset it. So you cannot do anything to get rid of it or Facebook either. Okay. Um, how do you find these networking groups like BNI? So you can search BNI and you can search your local area because it is nationwide. Um, you can look on uh, Facebook events sometimes to see. You can look on LinkedIn to see if they're networking groups. You can put something out there on LinkedIn and say, say, does anybody know of a networking group in this area? 
Um, Chamber of Commerce is a great one to figure out. Like that's a great, uh, join your local chamber. You've got all these people and these events that you can go to. So BNI, I found out through somebody else at my last position. I actually almost signed. I literally was about to sign with BNI and COVID shut the world down. And then I never, thank God I didn't do it a month earlier. So, all right, other questions, guys. I hope this is helping some people, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I don't consider myself smarter than anyone or, um, you know, better than anyone. I consider myself more, I'm motivated. Um, my why is great. I never want to work for a boss ever again. So I know I need to make this work. I'm coachable. You have to be coachable. You have to jump on trainings. You have to ask questions. Um, you have to, like when I say coachable, put what you learn to, to the test. Don't say, oh, I saw them do this mock booking. I'll do it next week. Or I'll share it to two groups. No, you have to be consistent. And the consistency does pay off. Um, I know Rachel and I have talked about this because Rachel has become more consistent and she's seen that people are starting to follow her or contacting her for quote requests, but you have to be consistent. You don't have to be the smartest, but you do have to be detail oriented. Um, you have to make it eye catching when you do mock bookings. Don't have bad grammar. You know, all these little things you have to do um, to be successful. So other questions? You you did, uh, you weren't listening, but you heard your name. I was talking about consistency with mock bookings that you noticed that people start started following you more once you were more consistent. Uh, Diane, I can't really answer that. Uh, how long until I had a consistent money stream because I started two months before COVID shut the world down. So. Um, you know, I booked $45,000 in my first five weeks here. And then two of them, two of those trips, well, one canceled, one postponed for two years. So I can't answer that because I, you know, nobody was traveling for a long time. So, oh, Ashley, Travify, um, I know you use Travify. Do you feel it helped you with your workflow? What I think Travify is great with is, um, or Travel Joy, whichever you choose, is it's very professional looking. It's very professional looking. I, you know, I started with Travify one week after I started here and I knew that yes, it costs money and I'm, yes, I'm taking a chance by, by paying this money, but my quotes are more professional. My, um, I'm able to add the uh, uh, um, optional tours on so easily. I, you know, the if the client gets to the airport, it says if there's a gate change, it says if there's a delay automatically. Like there's, yes, I find that it definitely helped with the workflow. I find that um, it looks more professional. And I just, I cannot say enough good things about Travify. If you're going to spend some money and invest in yourself, please invest in Travify. I absolutely love, or Travel Joy. I love it. Uh, for taxes, do you track everything in Expensify? No, Diane, I'm actually a spreadsheet girl. So in Expensify, I track my um, mileage, but everything else I use in Excel, like a, or a Google Sheet. But don't don't go by me. I still use a checking um, a check register, so don't go by me. <laughs> so yes, it is so worth the money, Travify. Uh, do I utilize affiliate links? Yes, I do. Um, I have actually what I did was I finally got sick of how all my little links were different. So I just did tiny URLs the other day or a few weeks ago. So I have my, uh, oh, this is a Zoom thing. I have my travel leaders review. I have my Facebook review, my Google review, excursions, golden tickets, sandals, Virgin Voyages. So all of these, yes, I use my affiliate links. And what I changed, what I started doing, which I just did is I put them all right here. So I have all my affiliate links right there. I also have, <laughs> on my website, book online, and I have all those right there. So, 
Okay. Other questions? And guys, I mean, I don't talk about what I make, but I'm making a lot more than I made in my salary job. I do work hard, um, but as David McCovey said, I'd rather work 80 hours a week for myself than 40 hours a week for someone else. You can make this a full-time you know, salary, a full-time position, but I'm at my, I, I don't, you know, wake up and then decide to do this. Or I, I sit at my desk. I have my desk. I have hours that I work. Um, if I'm going to go out to lunch with somebody, that's great, but I will plan that. I don't just, you know what? Oh, it's nice out. I'm not going to work today. I treat this as a full-time job. So anything else? So uh, how did I make the website? Uh, I did not. Um, a lot of people make their own on like Wix or um, Travify has a website builder. I built my own website 30 days after I started here on Google site. And it looked like a two-year-old could have done better. So I realized that that is not my forte. So I pay somebody to do my website and I love what he did. And he's, you know what, I, I will keep paying him because if something goes wrong, he handles it. I don't stress about it. So he's done a lot of um, other agents as well. And uh, so, yeah, I'll show you. Actually, I stole this from Sharon. Let me show Sharon Campbell. I love the, the wave. I love the wave. He just did that. So, and I will get you my links if I can find them. So I have a document with all the links on here for any referrals or anything like that, if you want to share. Okay. Uh, would you show me again what you used for? Isn't that horrible? Oh, for the links, I use tinyurl.com. Melissa, uh, I, I think he has a couple different um, pricing, but if you, on, on there, if you want to reach out to him, say, I referred you, he can talk it through with you. Because he does, I think, monthly, yearly, and then he offers something else for yearly. Uh, I just watched a training on Travel Joy, maybe by Rebecca. So Travel Joy and Travify are a lot alike. I'm going to tell you my feeling for why I chose Travify over Travel Joy. So I've been with Travify for three years. At one point, I wanted to check into Travel Joy because of something with group bookings. I was really disheartened by their customer service, or I should say their lack thereof. I did not get treated well. I basically did not get answers. Travify, in my opinion, their customer service is like 100% amazing. Um, if they, they will answer you right away, they will get on one-on-ones with you. They have great webinars, great trainings. In fact, I'm gonna, when I'm done here, I'm getting on one of their trainings. But they also listen to their clients. So if you want something, like I just contact them, like, can you make this, 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 and this? And it's not saying they're going to do it, but they will bring it back to their developers to po possibly do it. So I've seen changes in the past three years where um, agents have asked for things and they have gone and done it. So I just personally love Travify, but you have to, they both give um, free consultation or uh, free trials. I suggest doing both and finding what's best for you. Because I know Rebecca's happy with Travel Joy, Sierra's happy with Travel Joy. I just personally like Travify. Can I just say that for not to sell Travel Joy, but um, I I don't know how long ago you tried their customer service, but I have had um, really good. Um, maybe they're just listening. I know they're also maybe. building a library because I know Travify has a library. Yeah. Now they've added a library because people are asking for it. So I think they're starting to pick okay. up. But I think it was about a year, year and a half, a year ago, probably. Is okay. when I yeah, I can't, I can't compare. And I do like their group. Yeah. Trips, so. uh, what's the benefit of building your own site versus using the Evo site? Personally, I think the Evo site is too busy and not, um, wasn't my vision. 
Um, but I think it's perfect to start off with and then decide if you need a different website. So for me, I knew I wanted to focus on all inclusives and island vacations. And that's what my website, when you go to it, that's what you really see. So yes, Rob is great, Treva. I love him. Uh, okay, cool. You have a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, and Travify has an app that you give to your clients. Yes, yes, yes. Other questions? So like I said, I mean, it, so Kitty is one of my friends and she joined the uh, last week, the other day, and she was saying it's a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of work in the beginning. It definitely is. Um, take it one day at a time. Know that we've all been in those shoes and we've gotten past it and know that we, I mean, the support system I wouldn't say with Archer, let's not talk about Archer. Let's just talk about like for us, for Team Horizon, the support system is amazing. I mean, any time of the day or night, you can jump in a chat, you can ask a question. Somebody's gonna answer you. Um, we have trainings every single day. If you take advantage of those. So when I started, I was on Q and A's three to five times a week. I jumped on Q and A's and I learned from other people's questions. I didn't even know what my questions were. So I just learned from other people. So take advantage of all these trainings, get on as much as you can, because you definitely will learn. Uh, does he take care of the domain also? I already had my domain, Melissa, so I'm not sure you might be able to, but I've already had my dom domain. Uh, referring back to getting noticed on LinkedIn, I'm doing some training through their LinkedIn training. I've learned some great things about getting noticed on there. So what LinkedIn, do you have to pay for that, Rebecca? Well, I don't have to because my work, okay. offers it, but I do think that you have to pay. Um, they give you a free trial. So you okay. can do like a month free, but um, there's some LinkedIn influences on there that I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I just, you know, I just, took notes, of course, and I'm planning on implementing it. But I, I think for me, getting a marketing plan in place, because otherwise I'm all over the place because I have another job and yeah, I just need to stay focused. And that that's helped me stay focused. It's it's funny because I have a, a good friend who works for a marketing company and she wants me to do a marketing plan with them. And I'm like, just doing a marketing plan makes me nervous. Like, that's not my thing. So I'm like, no, I'll come to you if I need you. Yeah, it's not, okay. my, it's not my thing either, but yeah. I need to at least have one, even if it's not perfect, just at least sketched yeah. out. So, um, oh, and Versa said, Melissa, he does do the domain as well. So, this came up during a training today. If you can invoice from Travify versus Square. Um, I think what she means is... In Travel Joy, I signed up to receive payments directly in Travel Joy. So, I don't know if Travify can. I remember hearing yeah. about, but I do everything in Square. So yeah, I, don't I don't have use, an answer. I don't use Square anymore. I just use Travel Joy. Okay. And yeah, I can directly invoice. Does Megan I have, have an answer? Invoices? I see Megan like looking they, like Yeah, they're doing talk. a camp training this week to get certified. And from one of the ones that I just listened to, um, I'm pretty sure that you can have your invoice form on there and do it through Travify. So it yeah. seems like they're always evolving. And I think they that's are always the evolving. That they, that they just um, changed over to, but I could be completely wrong, but that's you, how I understood you it. You mean signing up directly? Like what I mean is instead of using Square, Correct. I, I don't charge anything in Square. Everything gets charged directly through Travel Joy. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, that's what gets, I. That's it's tied right to my bank account. Yes, correct. Yeah. But I, I'm not 100 okay. percent certain on that. But okay. it, they yeah, were Rachel talking about no. that. I thought okay. Megan. The last I heard was they are working on it, but I could be wrong. Okay. So okay. I could be wrong. Yeah. So. And they they don't charge any different rate than Square does. So. I'm not losing out on anything. Yeah. Well, actually, I would like Square because I get free processing. I get free processing on Square because uh, I my link I've given my link, so I yep. might actually want Square over that. That's true. Yep, that's a valid point. Yep. So, all right, cool, Alexis. Ask them and then let us know what they say. 
All right, any last questions? So I, I'm just gonna actually, before you, any last questions, I'm gonna just go over a little bit. So every every day I work on whatever I need to work on. I prioritize what I need to do as well, because I, you know, otherwise you're gonna have 5 million quotes or so many quotes and this and that, and this, you need to prioritize what's first. End of every day, I write my list. Um, every Friday, I email my team, any one-on-ones that I have, um, any, you have free processing for Square. I still took it out of my payment. There should be an issue then, Rachel, with that. Contact Square because they did that once to me and they paid me back. Um, but uh, I would do um, any one-on-ones with my team. I do for team building new agent meetings a couple times a week. And then I have on my calendar any client calls. So let's go to tomorrow because I didn't do any for today. What the heck? Where, where am I? Where am I in my calendar? Okay. I don't know where on my calendar. Oh, different. Okay. All right. Um, so like tomorrow, I have I offered a new agent meeting, so I have that. I offer client calls here, offering client calls here. So I actually put down when I offer client calls. So every Friday I will go through this and then do my Calendly so for clients so they can go in. I'll shine my Calendly. Um, so I have my travel agent opportunity, which as a team builder, one-on-one -on -one, my for my clients and a meet and greet. So my clients can go look. Now, granted, they only have tomorrow, but they can sign up for any of these times. So I make the times. So that way it's not like I'm back and forth as to, oh, I can talk to you at this time. I have, have the times on here. Um, so I'll do that. The other thing I would do is, um, you know, like I said, I prioritize. My big issue is time management, or I shouldn't even say time management. Like, like how Rachel just messaged something as I'm talking. I'm like, ah, if somebody messages me, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll read this. Oh, I'll do this. Oh, I'll do that. And then I realize I get no work done. So I actually really like um, working first thing in the morning, 6.30, 7 in the morning to like eight or nine because nobody bothers me. And I get more done in those two hours than then I do the rest of the day. So what I've started doing when I know I need to get a quote out or I know I need to you know, work on something, a confirmation, something like that, I will set my alarm. I'll be like, all right, this quote should take me 45 minutes. I'll set my alarm for 45 minutes and I will make sure that I don't look at anything but what I'm working on. Yep, squirrel. Yep, exactly. Um, so I have to get better at that. I know that's what I have to work on. Um, for social media, if you're going to go visit a place, like when I go, um, I just came back from Jamaica and I wanted to do my blog. I literally, the day that I'm leaving the place, I will write my blog because otherwise, once I get back, I won't take the time to write it. So um, just write yourself a list. When you first start, like even though I have a list and it's a long list, I will asterisk or put it in order of what I actually need to do. So even though I might have a list of 10 things to do, I know that three of them I have to get done that day. And don't give yourself, don't be too hard on yourself if you don't get everything done, but get done the things that you really need to do. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for coming and joining. I hope some, I hope some of this helped you.